Howdy, partner. Welcome to... Sorry, I'll start again. Aya! Welcome to Jimmy Barnes's channel. This is Leroy Screwballs. We have decided to review each other's favourite films. So go to Leroy Screwballs and you'll see me doing a review of his favourite movie. I've never seen it before. And likewise, Jimmy Barnes had never seen my favourite movie before. So... We have both watched each other's films and we are reacting and reviewing and basically letting each other and you guys know what we thought of these films. So hopefully you'll enjoy this format and um, without further ado, I will let Jimmy take over his own channel. I was going to say TTFN. What do cowboys say? I can't turn too much. We're in character, are we? I what, don't know. What, how do cowboys say goodbye? No, oh, I must say something. Um. How do cowboys say goodbye? This might answer your question. Yeah. The cowboys will play their first game of the 2020 season against the Rams on Monday, the 14th uh, of September, no. 1 20 a.m. Okay. No. Howdy, partner. I uh, welcome. So about a month ago, fellow YouTuber Leroy Screwballs and I decided that a good idea for a video for each of us would be to review each other's favourite ever movie. Leroy's being Tombstone, the 1993 western, and mine being 24 Hour Party People from 2002. And neither of us have seen the other person's favourite film before, so it is like a genuine first time review rather than a reaction, if you will. Uh, before I get going with the review, and there's likely to be spoilers for Tombstone in this by the way, so if you are intending to watch this and you don't know spoilers, then you might be best off stopping watching now. But um, I think it's quite interesting that Frampton and I, our favourite movies for each of us are both based on real events, albeit like 150 years apart or however long it is. Tombstone, of course, being set in the Old West of the 1800s and uh, 24 Hour Party People, which Leroy will be discussing and reviewing on his channel, so I won't go into too much detail. Set in the northwest of England, circa the 1970s throughout the 1980s. I watched Tombstone last night. I bought the DVD on eBay and it came a couple of days ago. Watched it last night. Uh, you would have seen a bit of footage of that and uh, I've got some thoughts about it and I'm ready to discuss it and to tell you whether I think it lives up to the hype that Leroy Screwballs has given it. It's a western, obviously, based on a true story or a couple of sort of well-known incidents in the time of the Wild West, they being the gunfight at the OK Corral and then the Earp Vendetta ride that followed it. I'm not big on westerns, I've not seen many. The ones I have seen I've tended to like, but it's always a genre where it's something just to watch for me, to pass the time. I don't go out of my way to seek a good western film, like I would say a good comedy film or a good documentary, as they are probably my two favourite genres, documentary and comedy. This was kind of a, not a new experience, but a renewed experience for me to watch a Western, albeit one made in the 1990s, where you could argue that Westerns were, pardon the pun, old hat. Trying to be an authentic Western, as in resembling A, what life was like in the Old West of America, and B, resembling the Western movies that had made people like John Wayne, etc., big stars decades prior. 
We've got all the usual Western tropes in a film, really. We've got the big moustaches for all the male characters, none of the females, fortunately. Uh, we've got the saloon scenes where there's gambling, playing cards, fighting, you know, books and women serving drinks and singing. All that stuff that um, you see it and it's instantly, yep, yeah, this is a cowboy flick. So one of the things that stood out for me regarding Tombstone pretty much from the get-go, or certainly from his first scene anyway, was Val Kilmer's portrayal of Doc Holliday. I was surprised, I was pleasantly surprised. Uh, Val Kilmer to me, whenever someone mentions him as an actor, and I'm not disrespecting the guy, but for me, seeing Val Kilmer's name attached to a film project doesn't usually fill me with optimism that it's going to be a good film. He isn't someone who screams quality cinema to me. Um, but he was, I would almost dare say, a revelation in Tombstone. His portrayal of the tuberculosis suffering Doc Holliday was just really fully fledged for me, fleshed out. You could tell this was a part that he was relishing. He plays it a little bit heightened, I would say, you know, a little bit sort of above what you would consider naturalistic, and also, dare I say it, he was kind of camp in a way. But it works, you know, and Val Kilmer, I think a lot of people found his performance, although there was other good performances in this, um, notably Kurt Russell, of course, as Wyatt Earp. But I think Val Kilmer as Holiday was uh, certainly at the time, and probably even now, 20 odd years on, it was considered the standout performance of the movie. And uh, right from his first scene, Doc Holiday had that really pale, sweaty face. You could tell this is a sick guy. This is a man who probably isn't going to make it to the very end of the film, although he makes it pretty close to the end of the film, it has to be said. Wyatt Earp and his brothers Virgil and, um, what's the other one, Morgan, Morgan Earp, and Doc Holliday as well. These are names that I'm kind of very vaguely familiar with. I've heard of them, but not being really into Western literature, history, Old West stuff then um, I don't know a great deal about them. So Wyatt Earp, he was played by Kurt Russell, probably the main character in the film. Um, his wife, she's addicted to opium in the film and uh, in real life as well from the notes that I've read on Wikipedia. There's kind of a romantic subplot going on at times in this film where um, I think it's Josephine, the performer, she and Wyatt fall in love with one another but Wyatt um, is married and he's kind of caring for uh, his opium-addicted wife. I don't think that romantic subplot particularly added to the film, really. It didn't need to be there, I don't think. Based on true life, so in that respect, yes, it should have been there, but um, for the actual two-hour film, the film was just over two hours, I think, um, it didn't really add anything to the overall structure of the movie, certainly. So the Earp brothers, they arrive in Tombstone in Arizona Territory and they earn money from uh, gambling, but they're kind of law-abiding brothers, especially Virgil, who looks to be the oldest brother. Um, he's certainly one for law and order. One of the big moments of the movie is the gunfight at the OK Corral, where um, the Earps and Doc Holliday have like a really brief shootout with these cowboys and that's the name of the gang the Kachis cowboys I think they're called it's a very exciting scene even though it's not even that long a scene they probably even padded it out from what I was reading probably padded it out in the movie and how it actually went down in real life it was that quick Oh my god. 
The Earps were the local lawmen, um, the sheriff of the town. He was sort of siding with these cowboys. The cowboys, they wore these like red neckties or something red on them to signify that they're part of this cowboy gang. They were essentially your earliest form of American organised crime. It was a crime syndicate that just ran roughshod over Tombstone, breaking the law whenever they wanted. Uh, their leader, Curly Bill, he had got high on opium in a previous scene and he ended up shooting the judge of the town and um, just generally causing trouble. Um, his second in command was Johnny Ringo. It was up to the Earps and the sickly but charismatic Doc Holliday to uh, sort them out, basically. I mean, and that is essentially the movie. And we go on to the Earp Vendetta ride afterwards. There is moments where major characters, things happen to them, like Morgan Earp, played by uh, Bill Paxton. I think he is, the late Bill Paxton. His death scene was very moving, one of the more sort of heart-rendering scenes in the film. Don't let him get you, brother. You're the one. He's the one. Don't worry about that now. Remember what I said about seeing a light when you're dying? Can't see a damn thing. Mark? Virgil Earp, he was wounded. I don't know if his arm was amputated, I can't remember, but he lost the use of one of his arms following the gunfight at the OK Corral, where I don't think any of the Earps in that were hurt badly, but the cowboys, the criminal gang, in essence, ambushed the Earps at a later date, shortly after the gunfight, and killed Morgan Earp and severely wounded Virgil Earp. So Wyatt Earp and Doc Holliday, it's up to them to arrange the vendetta, if you will. So um, that's pretty much Tombstone in a nutshell. Did I enjoy it? Yes, yes I did. I thought it was interesting, it was a good historical tale. Real people in this, people who existed in reality. Like I say, first Western I'd seen in many years, so it was a refreshing change of pace for me. Do I love it as much as Leroy Screwballs loves it? No, no I don't. I don't think it's awesome or outstanding. I think it's a good film, and of the few Westerns I've seen, it is one that I would recommend to people. But I think Leroy Screwballs would say when he watches 24-hour party people, and hopefully there will be a link for Leroy Screwballs' review of this at the top of my description text box, I've got a feeling I'm not even certain he's going to enjoy this at all, to be honest, let alone recommend it as something, as one of his new favourite movies, really. Tombstone, I enjoyed it. I wouldn't say I went mad over it. You know, there was a lot of sort of minor characters just sort of flitting in and out who never really got their personalities fleshed out. But there again, if you're trying to base it on real events and be as authentic as possible, then um, there's bound to be some people who, in reality, didn't do an awful lot, but they were around and they were recorded in history. So there is that. But um, I did enjoy this. I don't know if I'm going to give it a mark out of 5 or 10 or stars or something, because... I'm not a professional movie reviewer, I'm just doing this because I thought it'd be a good idea for a video, as did Frampton himself. Um, but I will give it a score. I'll give it 6.5 out of 10, which for me, I'm kind of stingy when it comes to ranking things. But for me, that is good for a Western, and I'm not a Western fan. Uh, for me, that is well over average. That's, you know, that's getting on to being good to very good. And that's what I think Tombstone is. I think it's a good to very good film. Am I desperate to see it again ASAP? No. Will I watch it again, I don't know, six months, a year, two years from now? Yes, more than likely. It was entertaining, and basically that is all you want from a film, innit? But 24-hour party people will always be my favourite, and I can't wait to find out what Frampton has to say about that, even though I've got a feeling he's going to despise it. But oh well. This is what we were doing. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Something a little bit different where two of us small YouTubers 
review each other's favourite films. Like I said, Leroy Screwball's review should be at the top of the description text box. And I want to thank you all for watching. Thank you to all of my subscribers, all of my patrons. And I do hope that all of you will join me again next time for my next movie review. Cheers everyone. See ya!